Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is grilled barbecue pork chops with sesame sprout slaw. But today we're going to be making a very simple but flavor packed dish that you can pull off any night of the week and best of all, it's not going to bust your New Year's resolutions. We'll start with a nice lean pork chop, soak it in some marinade to pump up the flavor and we're going to grill it off and brush it with a very light glaze of a bourbon barbecue sauce. On top of the chop, we'll do a bright green slaw with the sesame vinaigrette. So here we have some nice, big, thick bone-in chops. As you can see, they've already kind of been trimmed up. A Little bit of fat left on the outside. I'm not really gonna worry about any of that. We're just gonna kind of leave what's there behind. You can see the nice lean pork has just the smallest veins of fat running through, which is great. It's a lean product with a little bit of fat to carry the flavor. So nothing much to do with these. We're just gonna go straight into a zip top bag here and add our marinade. Now for the marinade, we're using the Smoke on Wheels Pork Marinade and Injection. This is a great product for pork, as the name implies. It's got some great stuff in it like apple juice, pineapple juice, soy sauce, a bit of Worcestershire, things that lend itself to all kinds of different flavor profiles. Today we'll be going slightly Asian with our flavor profile, but this works just as well for a barbecue profile as well. All right, so let's just zip this up. We'll get the air out of there. We'll let these soak in here for about, oh, 30 to 45 minutes while we put together a slaw and get the grill going. So now we're gonna prep the veggies for the slaw. Just three really easy vegetable ingredients here. We've got Brussels sprouts, bean sprouts, and carrots. Our Brussels sprouts have already rinsed. We're gonna cut that stem end off. We'll cut these in half here, and then we're just gonna kinda do a shred on them. So line them up right next to each other and slice them as thin as you can. Take the stem off, cut that in half, and then just go in as thin as you can. So once you got all your Brussels sprouts finished off, we'll move on to our bean sprouts. Now just about a quarter of the weight that you use on your Brussels sprouts, whatever that number happens to be. And these we don't want to chop up too fine. We still want them to have that nice long texture. Uh, so we're going to just go a rough chop. And last we've got our carrot, which I scrubbed really good, so we're not going to bother peeling that. We're just going to go right on the grater here, that large grate. go and now we've got that bright orange pot to add to our slaw. Look at that. Now before we move on to the dressing, we're going to add a little bit of sugar to our veggies. I've got about two teaspoons of sugar here that we're just going to sprinkle over the vegetables and then we'll just kind of work that in there. Start to break down some of those cell walls, open it up so that they can release some moisture and then we're going to go build our vinaigrette. So four simple ingredients here. We're gonna start off with our vinegar. We've got a quarter cup of rice vinegar. I'm gonna add to that two tablespoons of soy sauce and one tablespoon of sesame oil. Now for that extra citrus pop, we're also going to squeeze in the juice of half of a lime. All right, so we've got some acid in here. We've got some fat in here, two things that we have to have for a vinaigrette. We've added the soy sauce for the salt and our sugar is already in the slaw. So just a quick shake gives you that temporary emulsion you get with a vinaigrette. I'm not gonna add all of this at first. We'll make sure that we don't have more than we need. We just wanna soak the veggies here. We can use most of this. And honestly, let's just top it off here. If you wanna scale this recipe up, you always can, but this is a pretty good little amount to make during the week, something you can get through before it goes bad. So let's check this out. Oh, beautiful crunch. It's so bright and acidic, but that sesame fat just calms everything down. The fat carries the flavor. The only thing that I'm thinking we could use is a little bit of garnish Sesame seed would be a great garnish, but we've also got our everything bagel seasoning. So I'm gonna shake some of this in here. And this way, not only do we get the sesame seed, we also get some garlic and some onion chunks and those little poppy seeds as well. 
So cover this up, throw it in the fridge, and just let it sit. It's a good idea to do this right when you do the pork chop marinade. That way you can kind of compact everything. This gets a nice amount of time to sit and for those juices to soak up, and you're not wasting time doing this way ahead during the day. So we're trying to compact this into a nice, let's say, hour-long schedule approximately. When that 30 to 45 minutes is up on those chops, which we're coming up on pretty quick here, we're gonna get them right onto the grill. All right, well, it's time to pull these out of the marinade and then soaking up all that fruit juice goodness, a little bit of saltiness, a little bit of sweetness in there, starting to break things down. And I'm just gonna pat the surfaces dry here so that we can put a little bit of seasoning on the outside. But what we're doing today is a little bit different than what we normally do. Uh, we kind of talked about all the flavors that we worked into the pork already. So instead of using a dry rub today, we're simply going to be using some gochujang paste. Now this is a fermented chili paste, so it's got some heat to it. It's also got some funkiness and some salt to it. And it's got that nice bright red color. So we're just going to rub this into the surface of our pork chops. So we've kind of accomplished a bit of a balance here with, with the sweetness and, and the salty. Um, this is going to end up more salty than sweet, which is fine because we're going to finish it off with a light glaze of our bourbon barbecue sauce. Today we'll be grilling on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. It's running at 475 degrees. I've got it set up for direct grilling. So we've got the door removed on the two-piece diffuser so we get direct flame onto the grill grates. Now we do have grill grates installed on the left side so that we can get those really nice sear marks. Also got the baffle pushed all the way in to really trap the heat in this area so we get some really nice intense heat. I'm gonna hit the grates here with just a little bit of duck fat to prevent some sticking. and right onto those super hot grates. All right, we've been going for about five minutes now. Look at those grill marks. That's looking beautiful. We're gonna flip this over. These are nice thick steaks, so we've been cooking with the door closed. This one's not quite ready to release yet. We're getting really close though. As soon as those pop, they're ready to go. There we go. A little coaxing. So we'll do the same thing on this side and then we can kind of get a nice cross hatch going and always finish indirect if need be. All right, so some great color going on there. We're just gonna turn these slightly. So we get that nice cross hatch going on. We'll flip them and do this one more time before moving them to indirect to finish cooking. All right, let's see how this is looking. Wow, that's beautiful. I love that. Very nice. Let's go ahead and take a little reading on the internal temperature here. We'll start with the big guy in the back. Dead center, we're still at 90 degrees. That means we've got a ways to go. See the little guy right in the hot spot, 100. So we're gonna fall in that range. We're gonna let these get their grill marks uh, one last time here before we move them indirect. So now we're gonna finish these indirect. We're shooting for an internal temperature of 135 to 140. And that's going to finish us in the end at about 145 after the carryover cooking. That's right where the USDA says that we should be finishing these off. And more importantly, that's right where we still have a very juicy pork chop. If you're going to go any further than this, you really risk drying them out. So I recommend pulling at 135 to 140. Beautiful. Now remember the baffle is pushed in, so we've kind of got this indirect zone created right here. We can let these continue to come up to temp without significantly darkening the outside. All right, well the little guys come up to temp now, so we're gonna pull that one off. The bigger ones still have a few degrees to go. Let's check these out. Yeah, about five or so on the bigger ones. So let's just let those ride. 
And then as each of these chops comes off, we're just gonna hit it with a little bit of our Smoke on Wheels bootleg barbecue sauce. I mean, just a light glaze. So we're gonna get some sweetness out of this. This has got some really cool flavors in it as well. It's actually got some cola in it, some, some soda pop. Spread it evenly. So this is gonna sweeten things up. A little bit of bourbon in there as well. So we're mixing together our uh, KC and our Asian flavors on this one. So I would just pop a little bit of slaw on top of the, each one of these before serving them. Now you've still got your barbecue, but you've got a nice fresh salad on top as well. All right, let's get a taste. Go right in the center there. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, nice and juicy. Just barely pink in the middle. Mmm. Well, the slaw is the first thing that hits. It's bright, it's citrusy, and then you get the smoky char from the pork. I'd say the sugar is pretty understated, which is great. You don't want a lot of sweetness in this dish. But you really get the impression that you're eating barbecue here. From KC to the Far East, it all comes right together. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue where barbecue legends are made.